it's going to be too noisy. So I was in Rome for a few weeks and I'd read that there was an Anglo-Saxon district with an old Anglo-Saxon church. So I decided to check it out. Now there's not much left of the church and in fact apart from the name you can't really tell that there was ever anything Anglo-Saxon there at all. Nevertheless, there is an interesting story to tell. So tune in, I hope you're going to enjoy this vlog it's and uh, like if yeah. I'm walking. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. So Rome for the Anglo-Saxons was a very important city, certainly following the conversion. Conversion effort had to come from here in Rome. It was Pope Gregory, he decided to send missionaries over the Augustinian mission to Britain at the end of the 5th century, at the end of the 6th century. And so when the Anglo Saxons converted, it became a very important link for them with the rest of Europe and into the Mediterranean. And lots of Anglo Saxons actually came to Rome, but the really important Anglo Saxon king that really started things off with the Anglo Saxon neighborhood here in Bordeaux is King Ina of Wessex. And he actually decided to retire to Rome and move from his kingdom to give up his kingdom in the 720s and move to Rome. And that's when the real move of the Anglo Saxons towards the city started. Although it wouldn't flourish until the 9th century when actually the largest group of pilgrims to Rome were Anglo Saxons themselves. A very Saxon looking wall in front of us. <laughs> it's not really. It's much more modern. But it is where the Pope fled in 1527. Yes. Accompanied by the Swiss Guards, away from the marauding troops of the Holy Roman Emperor. So Rome during the early Middle Ages was quite a turbulent place. Unlike the somewhat stability that we tend to associate with the Roman period, after the collapse of the Western Roman Empire, lots of different peoples moved through the area. Now, the papacy did survive through, and obviously that's where the Anglo-Saxon mission came from as well. But that doesn't mean that the troubles of Rome were over. And in fact, during the 9th century, there were several large fires that ravaged their way through the Anglo-Saxon border here in Rome. What you can see behind me is the Castel Sant'Angelo, and that actually became a fortress during the early Middle Ages. It had been a mausoleum for one of the Roman emperors, for Hadrian, but it had been turned into a fortress, and it was through the control of that fortress up there, obviously the top layers now are from a much more modern period, that rulers try to control Rome. There's also another story that several of the popes were killed and were banished and blinded and all of this kind of thing. So there was a lot of political turmoil happening in Rome at the time. Now as if that was, wasn't enough, there were also Saracen raiders, so these Muslim raiders that would come across the sea. They had bases on various islands, uh, Sicily for example, there were a lot of them there. They came and they ra raided Rome several times, also in the 9th century, and burned down large areas. And so the Saxons that came and settled here in Rome, they often formed part of these local militias that had to defend their neighborhoods and had to defend Rome against these pirates that were going to raid them. Walking. And go, never turn back. So this behind me is the site of an old hospital. Um, and there's a new hospital just down the road now. But it's the old hospital because when the Anglo-Saxon scholar, I think it's in the 14th century, when it closed down because there weren't enough English people coming to Rome, there wasn't any going into it, they actually decided to move all the remnants of the buildings and put them together into a new institution. And that would essentially be a kind of hospice or a kind of hospital. Um, and that one behind us there was kind of the remnant of that that survived for quite a long time. And now I guess the new hospital that they built near to the site is again a continuation of that. So in some ways, I guess the Anglo-Saxon border of Rome is still here, but just in a, in a very different way. But we're gonna find some evidence for some more things going on, aren't we? So we're now walking through what would have been the heart of Borgo. And actually the name Borgo itself comes from, or the, the legend is, it comes from the old English word Burg. And you know, obviously from Alfred's reign that he built many buiri, the plural form, 
throughout the kingdom and what what it meant was some kind of fortified or enclosed area or some kind of town that he built and so Burgo is just the Italianization of that term of Burg into Italian and that's why this place is still called Burgo to this day because it was the Burg or the town of course what the old English people would have called their neighborhood here in Rome and it's now very close to the Vatican and you can still hear a lot of old English being spoken here today isn't that right? Every day. That's Every day oh yeah. Several famous Anglo-Saxons made their way to Rome during the time so the sister of Alfred the Great who was married to Burgred, who was the last king of the independent Mercia before dri being driven out by the great heathen army, which you can see in I don't know. The Last Kingdom. The Last Kingdom. Got it first time. Which you can see in The Last Kingdom, as well as Alfred when he was a child, he went on pilgrimage apparently to Rome as well and saw the Holy City, met the Pope, which was something, of course, very important for the then Christian rulers well, of Anglo Saxon well, England. That's when he was four years old and then later. Mm. So he, he, may, he may have gone twice, um, which would be interesting. So, you know, even though with Rome you don't really tend to think about the Anglo-Saxon period, in fact, it might have been quite an important city for some of them, certainly for Alfred. And in his, his son Edward's time, there was a, a part of a law code that explained that actually part of the sum of money that went to, um, to Rome and to the Pope, because they had to pay each year to the Pope, that part of it would go to the scholar to funding this church that, that they had here in Rome. So you don't like the Anglo-Saxon district? No! <laughs> why not? It's terrible. It's all, oh, why? It's small and you think it's important. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> oh. Well, so you hear it guys. The Anglo-Saxon district in Rome, very important, beautiful, really, Susanna would highly recommend you go and visit straight away. The same three streets you can spend hours in there, right? Absolutely oh, hours. <laughs> anyway, this has been the history, this has been Rome and architecture or, you know, actually just annoyance with Susanna today. But anyway, I'm Hilbert and I'll see you later.